When my wife and I purchased this Kenmore 22352 washing machine, one of their 500 series, we figured it worked like all the other Kenmores we had had. We were so wrong that I decided to put together a video about some of its stranger features for anyone else thinking of purchasing one. The controls are straightforward. The soil level knob adjusts the amount of time the washer agitates the load. Less for extra light, longer for heavy. The wash temperature dial seems self-explanatory until you read the fine print, at which point you'll discover that even at the cold setting, some hot water will be added to keep the average water temperature at what the manufacturer decided was the best minimum temperature. At first I thought this was a gimmick, but then I realized that some people living in very cold climates may have a problem with their regular tap water being so near freezing that it could reduce the washing efficiency. This large dial adjusts the agitation type and spin speed and durations to provide the best cleaning for each type of load. By far the strangest feature is the water level dial. On every washer we've had, this would set the water level to whatever we thought was best. With this machine, you have to select auto or deep. Deep adds water until the washer is full. Auto senses how the load causes drag on the agitator and adjusts the water level to what the manufacturer has decided is the optimum level. And this is where the washer will drive many people crazy. To maximize the scrubbing effect of clothes rubbing against each other, the water level is set so low it won't cover the clothes with water on most settings. You'll actually have clothes sticking up out of the water. The manual states that because the drum and agitator move in opposite directions, this low water level encourages the load to constantly roll over, kind of like a sausage. This sounds reasonable, but this increased scrubbing action comes at the cost of increased wear on the clothes. Assuming it works, the washer may use a little less water and wash cleaner, but the user may end up having to replace their clothes more often. Unfortunately, this is something that would be difficult to test and verify. Another oddity about this automatic water sensing system is that during the sensing cycle, which is really just the fill cycle, the washer switches several times between agitating and adding small amounts of water. This easily doubles the amount of time it takes for the machine to fill and start washing compared to machines where the user decides what water level he or she wants. This final dial lets you control the number of rinses. So, let's fire this beast up and see how it works. First up, we'll try a very light load of 10 small white hand towels and one colored towel to help show how the load moves during the wash cycle. For this first test, we'll set the washer to extra light, cold water, normal, auto water level, and single rinse. The fill or sensing cycle starts with short turns while adding water. After a minute, the spins stop and more water is added. At the three minute mark, it starts agitating. With the water level so low and only the agitator's low stubs engaging the wash, any clothes in the washer are pounded so mercilessly that if they had any buttons, I wouldn't be surprised if they were ripped off. After a minute and a half of this abuse, the agitation stops and more water is added. In the case of this very light load, the water level is high enough to completely cover the towels. This suggests that there is a minimum water setting because contrary to the manual, which states the normal water level is below the level of the clothes, with this load, they're completely covered. At about seven minutes, agitation starts again. Even though the water level seems sufficient, the agitation still looks to be very hard on the fabric. Also, the towels don't appear to be turning over as the manual said they would. Their movement looks more like they're just being beaten back and forth. I believe the reason is that the water level is so low, the spiral blades on the agitator don't provide enough circulation to cause the towels to roll over. Starting around the 10 minute mark, the washer goes through three cycles of slowing down the agitation for half a minute, then speeding up to normal for two more minutes. 
around 16 minutes, it slows, drains, and starts adding small amounts of water while the drum executes several partial spins. It then stops, spins, and drains. This is followed by a series of slow, short spins while adding short bursts of water. I believe this is the rinse cycle. Rather than filling to immerse clothes completely, it saves water by only adding enough to flow through the wash. The problem I observed is that only the lowest layers of cloth have water moving through them to rinse them. The upper layers, which are plastered to the sides of the drum, don't get much, if any, of the rinse water. After 21 minutes, the washer goes through a slow spin followed by a fast spin. This sequence repeats two more times, after which the washer signaled it was done. Total wash time, 39 minutes, which seems long for such a light load. Oh, and by the way, if the towels don't look very clean, it's because all of the towels being used for this video have long-standing stains that have resisted many bleachings. Next, keeping all the settings on the machine the same, we're going to triple the load by adding three large bath towels. This will tell us if the auto water sensor adjusts the water level to accommodate this much heavier load. Since the purpose of this test is to see how well the automatic water level sensor works, I won't make you sit through an entire wash again. All we need are the initial and maximum water level. After the initial fill, which seems to be the same as in the first light load, the agitation is absolutely brutal. Even after the maximum water level is reached, the scrubbing action is so severe, I wouldn't want to subject my clothes to it. This might be acceptable for loads of small items like socks and handkerchiefs, but I have to think anything larger could be damaged. And in fact, clothes being torn to shreds by this machine is one of the most common complaints on review forums. True, these are towels and I don't have the machine set for towels, but it still demonstrates that this machine uses water levels that are so low on most settings that it could damage clothes. So what can we do about it? Simple, we'll lie to the machine. Let's see what happens with the same load if we set it to the bulky and bedding setting. And here it is with the same load. The water level is three inches lower than in the deep fill setting. It uses a lot more water than the other settings, but at least it isn't tearing up clothes. This test was repeated on the jeans and towel setting, the only other setting that the manual says uses more water. As can be seen here, the water level appears to me still too low. Now I'm sure Kenmore has a PhD expert with computer simulations and chalkboards filled with mathematics proving these low water settings are more efficient than traditional levels and are perfectly safe for clothes. But for me, I just don't feel comfortable subjecting my clothes to such brutal treatment. So, from now on, I'm washing all of my loads on the bulky setting, with the exception of bedding, where the higher water level of the deep fill setting will be useful. We'll increase the amount of clothes in each load slightly to make the best use of the higher water level, but not so much that the clothes are overworked. I hope you found this video helpful for either using your own Kenmore 22352 machine or deciding whether or not to purchase one. Please visit my main website at waynesthisanddat.com for more product reviews. Until the next video, thanks again for watching.